I am vowing to not talk about the Michigan sign stealing allegations today, except for right now. <laughs> except for the time being, I am not going to sit here and talk about the Michigan sign stealing allegations, how ridiculous they are, and how the fans have been outrageous in their defense. Listen, I guess I'll talk about it for 15 seconds. Go. If somebody brings up evidence that you have cheated and your only defense is, nah, uh, you've lost. Okay, that's just generally how it goes. The end on Michigan sign stealing for right now. It's Thursday. There are games tonight, tomorrow, Saturday. Who should be on upset alert this weekend? I've got, what is that, four? I got four teams who should be on upset alert. And I'll start with Air Force. Air Force is at Colorado State. Earlier this season, we call, saw Colorado State give Colorado a hell of a fight in one of the best games of the college football season. Air Force is coming off a rivalry game against Navy where they got a win, moved to 7-0, and are now, I think, completely in the driver's seat for the New Year's Six opportunity for the Group of Five representative. Air Force has that opportunity. It is theirs for the taking, and it. on the flip side, that means it's theirs for the losing as well. If they can get through Colorado State, and Colorado State, has played pretty good team stuff. They lost by two last week to UNLV, who's now six and one. Colorado State is certifiably not bad. And Air Force at Colorado State, short trip against a good opponent after a rivalry game. Look out for upset alert. I would love, I cannot tell you how much I would love to see a service academy in the New Year's Six. I I I I just would adore that because I they don't get those opportunities. There are a lot of Power 5 schools who will not play Navy, Army, and Air Force because of the challenges that come with facing those schools both before, during, and after the games in the weeks following. They just don't generally happen all that frequently. So I would like to see that. So I hope Air Force wins. Truth be told, I, I hope the Falcons make the New Year Six at 12-0 and and have just a fantastic season because I think Troy Calhoun has done a really great job there and should probably get a power five job out of the deal. And if he can get them to 12 and 0 and 13 and 0, 14 and 0 and a New Year's six win, that'd be a hell of a season. One that we talk about for a long time. So I'm on board. There are two, and this is kind of a rapid fire episode today, two Pac 12 schools that I think should be on upset alert this week. First of all, Oregon State is at Arizona. Beavers are ranked number 11 in the country. Sneaky good. Arizona has three losses. There are all power five losses. They are Washington, one of the best teams in the country, Stanford, and Mississippi State. And all three of those games were one-score games or less. Arizona has not had their butts kicked this year. They haven't. Their three losses were by seven, seven, and two. So I'm not saying that they're going to beat the Beavs, but I'm telling you, DJ Uyunglele and the Oregon State Beavers should be at least on a heightened upset alert. And if they can go in to Tucson and lay down the wood, that would be a really nice win for them just because Arizona State's four and three and their three losses have been tight games where the difference has been a play or three. If you can go in and just take somebody to the woodshed that has that reputation, all right, I would be somewhat impressed by that. Winning on the road in conference is difficult, and it, people lose sight of that. Winning conference games is hard. Winning conference games on the road is harder. And I just think people get blinded by resumes and records where if somebody is four and three and we're the number 11 team in the country, we should go in there and kick their ass, right? Well, it's, it's a little harder than that because you're recruiting the same guys. You are super familiar with the tendencies, the personnel, 
groupings, the packages, what everybody's trying to accomplish, and then you're going on a road. It's harder. It's easier said than done. And I just think everybody that I have on upset alert this week is on the road in conference play. So Oregon State at Arizona, sneaky one, sneaky. The other Pac-12 game I have, Washington is at Stanford, and Stanford's record is not great, okay? Like, they are not going to jump off the page at anybody of like, oh, wow, Stanford, got to look out for the Cardinal. And I completely understand that. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But, and I've mentioned Stanford before, they are scrappy, which nobody wants to be called scrappy. Nobody's looking to be like, oh, what's an adjective that describes us? Scrappy. Great. <laughs> because if you were talented, people would call you talented. If you were explosive, people would call you explosive. When you're scrappy, means you're you're battling tough. In Stanford, their losses this year, they got dump trucked by USC. They lost to FCS Sacramento State. Um, lost by a lot to Oregon. Lost by a lot to UCLA. But they beat Colorado when they were down 29 nothing, And they beat Hawaii when they were on the road at Hawaii in week zero. Stanford is two and five. Which allows for a little look past opportunity. A little Washington is in the middle of a stretch here where they're just coming off of some serious highs, right? And, and last week they had a, a difficult game and won a tight one to remain one of the top teams in the country. But they're coming off a Oregon, Arizona, Arizona State, I beg your pardon. And this is before they're going into at USC, Utah, at Oregon State, Washington State. So this is a, a ripe opportunity, in my opinion to look past somebody that's two and five lost you at FCS school earlier this year. You don't have to take them all that serious because you can look down the road and say, all right, we're seven and oh, we're going to be eight. No, we're going to be eight. But beg your pardon. Eight. No, we go to USC nine and oh, we go to Utah, et cetera. Washington did not have a great game last week. Either they let that hang over into this week or they write the ship and take care of business this week. That, that, that seems to me like that's really kind of the only two options are you either say, hey, we got a bad game out of our system. Let's go to Palo Alto and kick some ass. Or you say, OK, we were able to win last week against Arizona State, who's not very good. Got another not very good opponent this week. We can kind of sleepwalk through this week, rest up and get ready for USC, Utah, Oregon State, Washington State. That's how you get burnt. So Washington, not coming off a great win, but a win is a win is a win is a win. So we'll see what happens there. But I just, I'm just i putting them on upset alert. Stanford's scrappy. They're not going to just roll over and die, I don't think. But I do I expect Washington to lose? No. But it could be closer than the experts predict, I think. I would love to tell you, I would love to tell you that Florida has Georgia on upset alert. I just, I, I don't know that I can tell you that. I would love to tell you that the world's largest outdoor cocktail party is a rife opportunity for Florida to grab a win over the number one team, number one ranked team in the country. I just don't see that. I saw somebody, I forget who it was earlier this week, say that, you know, I've never seen an SEC school that has had just as difficult a schedule as Georgia has the next four weeks. Wait, what? Huh? The idea that, like, oh my gosh, Georgia is going through the gauntlet. They're playing Florida. Okay, unranked Florida. Not not great <laughs> like they're the floor in florida is certifiably okay right like they are fine they're five and two but the idea that like 
oh my gosh, Georgia's just got it so tough this year. They've got Florida, and then they're going to play Ole Miss too. Like Missouri is the 16th ranked team in the country. Missouri is ranked 16 because they're in the SEC. Ole Miss is pretty good, but they lost to Alabama, whose quarterback play is like high school senior level. They play at Tennessee, which is easier said than done. I get that. But for them, for somebody to say that this is the toughest four week stretch they can ever remember in the SEC, like, really? Really? Florida, Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee is a toughest four week stretch you've ever seen. I don't know that it's the toughest four week stretch. I don't know that there really is a super difficult four week stretch in the SEC this year. Because I don't know that there are four just really good, how in the hell are we going to beat them teams in the SEC? I don't think that that exists. So for <laughs> Georgia and for Georgia to not have, you know, Alabama, who is probably the second best team in the conference on their schedule, would lead me to believe that there, there's not a like, oh my gosh, they've got to play Ole Miss. It just doesn't it doesn't compute for me. And I, I, I've talked about the SEC self-importance on here before, where you get such tunnel vision that you end up thinking that like hiring Will Muschamp as your head coach is a really great idea, or hiring Jeremy Pruitt as your head coach is like, holy cow, nobody's ever thought of a better idea than this. It's like, well, yeah, they have. I think SEC fans and SEC media, SEC coaches, presidents, athletic directors get so locked in on what those 14 schools are doing that they miss the forest through the trees sometimes. Florida, Mizzou, Ole Miss, Tennessee is not some backbreaker of a schedule. It's just not. I would love to tell you that the Gators could take on Georgia pound for pound, throw some punches and get a win. I just don't believe that that's in the cards. Now, do I think that Georgia could be somewhat vulnerable over the next four weeks? Not even really. I think at Tennessee is probably the toughest one, but you get Florida in a neutral site, neutral site, Mizzou and Ole Miss. I don't not real high on Mizzou or Ole Miss to tell you the truth. Tennessee is difficult, but I still think Georgia cakewalks through it. So I'd love to put Georgia on upset alert. I just don't, I don't, I don't see that. The final upset alert this week is I got Ohio State at Wisconsin. For before the Big Ten split into divisions and all that stuff, and they didn't end up playing every year. Camp Randall is tough. And in the past, when Ohio State went up there, it was either a tight loss or they just blew the doors off the Badgers. And I don't know what to expect. I think Ohio State could have their eye off the ball just a little bit because, and they would never admit this. Ryan Day would never admit this. I don't think any of the players would admit this in a press conference. They've spent all week watching the Michigan sign stealing allegations. I promise you, I promise you that has happened, that they have paid a lot of attention to that. And I don't think that that has any like bearing on how serious they are taking Wisconsin because Luke Fickle knows Ohio state. He knows the personnel. He knows the coaches. He knows the players. He's going to be supremely knowledgeable about as knowledgeable as anybody Ohio state will play this year about the inner workings of the coaching staff, the players, the tendencies, all of those things. And Wisconsin is no slouch. They are five and two. Their losses are to Iowa, who if Wisconsin could have scored a touchdown, <laughs> might have won the game. And Washington State, who started out the year really hot and now has just fallen on hard times. But Luke Fickle knows Ohio State, and Ohio State has spent a good portion of the week, I promise you, paying attention to, wait, Michigan was trying to do what? Whether it's the coaches, whether it's the players, all of those things are true. And again, 
They would not admit that, but I promise you it has happened. That they haven't been supremely and solely focused on Wisconsin. It has not happened. Now, I think this is a big deal for Ohio State because coming up in the next couple of weeks, there's Rutgers, Michigan State, and Minnesota before the game at the end of the season. So it's not like Ohio State is looking past Wisconsin or anything like that. But has your eye been off the ball just a little bit this week? Probably. I don't know that it's enough cause for concern, but I think there is at least a little bit of like on Thursday, hey, we got to focus up, all right? We've got to get our eye on the prize here, and that is going to Camp Randall and getting a victory. We've got to push all the Michigan stuff out the back of our minds. And you can say that that's Michigan living rent-free in Ohio State's head or whatever. Michigan has <laughs> has signs up in their weight rooms like, what are you doing to beat Ohio State today? That's just part of the nature of the rivalry is you are going to live rent-free in your opponent's head. No matter how good, no matter how bad you've been. That's just a product of how important the rivalry is to those two programs. So Ohio State has paid attention to what has happened at Michigan this week and probably has taken their eye off the ball when it comes to Wisconsin. I don't, I'm not predicting an Ohio State loss, but I am predicting that going on the road in conference play when your biggest rival is accused of cheating and you have been kind of the sole focus of their cheating efforts, you're going to pay attention to that. It's going to be a distraction, whether you think it should be, whether you think it is or not, it is. And we'll see how they handle it. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. We'll be back at it on Sunday. Got the stock report to Stiff Arm Trophy update. Looking forward to it. For Looking forward to another great weekend of college football. If you are watching here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the college football content we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you are listening on the podcast, drop a five-star review goes a long way in helping out and getting in front of more college football fans. Back at it Sunday here on the Daily Huddle on Saturday.